one of the biggest debates is, should we keep the current definition and diagnosis of Parkinson's disease that we've classically used, or should we broaden it out? Um, I think everyone's going to have a different point of view on this. I think it's helpful from a, from a scientific point of view, from a point of view in trying to define mechanisms and trying to plan treatment trials. But from the patient's point of view, I'm not sure it's so helpful. Can I disagree with it? Yeah, you can. <laughs> you already have. You can. I think we need to personalise medicine for Parkinson's disease. I think people with Parkinson's disease have things in common, but they have things which are very different, and we need to personalise that medicine and target the medicine. So I'm just picking up on what's really trendy at the moment, which is personalisation of medicine. We've seen in other fields of... Uh, neurology, neurodegenerative diseases, increasing subclassification of diseases, and patients don't any longer identify with a particular disease. So, and, and, and increasingly these definitions have just a series of letters and numbers. So if you're told you have C9 or 72 or PLA2 G6 or DRPLA, you try and find someone else that's got that condition and you suddenly feel very alone with that diagnosis. There's huge amounts of information coming in about subtypes of Parkinson's disease, non-motor symptoms, early symptoms, late symptoms. This is a huge debate and I don't think anybody's settled on which direction to go in. But the one thing I can tell you is changes in the air. You will see a redefinition. You will see Parkinson's disease characterised in ways that we've never had up until the current era. <laughs>